Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to part 16 of Detailing and Building the Revell Monogram 148 Scale B17G. Part 16 rounds out our multi-part series on this project. And in this last video, we're going to weather the aircraft and do the final assembly. In addition, I'm going to show you the simple tools and products that I use to do my weathering. So, let's get started. I've got the underside weathering complete. I think I overdid it a little bit on the silvering to replicate uh, worn out paint, but um, I'm still happy with the way it looks. This is all done with pastels. I used uh, a wedged makeup sponge and swept from front to back with pastel dust, and then I used a brush, a stiff brush, and used uh, this is a dark gray and this is a black pastel dust. These are all pencil pastel dust. And then uh, once I was done, um, I gave it a, a sealer, a uh, clear flat coat, so that now I can touch it without a problem. Back here, I did make one mistake. I, I touched it with my finger and smeared it. So I had to cover it up with uh, a lot more of the dark pastel but uh, it still came out pretty good I just think I overdid it a little bit with the sponge dabbing and I'll show you my technique in a minute for sponge dabbing and I'll show you the process I used for the weathering so now it's the upper side that I have to do and I'll use a light gray to lightly lighten up the olive drab and um, fade in the decals a little bit and I'll just on, on the top of the fuselage it'll just be this area the side will still be olive drab and what I'm trying to replicate here is a direct rays of the Sun fading out the olive drab color so uh, most times I'll add a little bit of white to the olive drab to lighten it up I didn't do it this time because I wanted to see how much the uh, the uh, light gray pastel dust lightened it up. So I do need to cover uh, the bootstripes and um, I'll do that and then uh, we'll go ahead and proceed to uh, lighten it up and I run my sponges from front to back to replicate the airflow over the surfaces. So uh, I'll get back with you as soon as I'm done. And uh, don't forget you got to do the, the cowlings too so I've done the, the uh, light gray, dirtied them up, and now I've got to lighten up the olive drab. And again, I think I overdid it a little bit on the silvering, but um, once it's all together, it'll look pretty good. I've got the uh, upper surface completed, and I used a light gray, which I swept with a sponge from front to back to simulate the airflow and along the fuselage here and then um, the other thing I did was I used a stiff brush along here and I used some flat black pencil pastel to add a little bit of exhausting here and here and here and uh, came out pretty good and then um, I gave it a complete coat of uh, testers dull coat and what that did was it it kind of washed out the, the gray lightened up the olive drab and uh, it came out pretty good so if you go back and look at the photos or the not the photo but the uh, the video uh, when I first completed the application of the dull coat to seal the decals and look at this surface you'll notice that the olive drab color is a lot lighter and it's faded and uh, it came out pretty good so I've got all the masking removed and I did the same thing on the elevators they've been lightened up and so um, they're gonna look pretty good actually 
yeah that one goes there and on the ailerons same thing so this one goes here and this one goes here so they came out pretty good there's the underside and the upper side and the same thing here so uh, I'm really pleased with the way it came out again I think I overdid the the um, silvering a little bit for simulating paint chips and the other thing I forgot to do was you have to rotate the sponge otherwise you get similar patterns like over here so let me show you what I'm talking about you can see similar patterns and that's because I forgot to rotate the brush the uh, the sponge right here same pattern but it still came out pretty good when I do the still photography when I'm done you'll get a better sense but now at least you can handle the model because it's been sealed I like the way the exhaust came out looks really good so um, all of the tapes and and tissue that I stuffed in all of these openings really helped preserve the interior color so now it is time to begin the final process I got to work on the clear parts and I'll show you how I do those and um, you know when I went when I tested the cockpit glass it snapped into place and it was real tight so I think what I'll do is just put a little bit of white glue in there to hold it in place but it should be fairly tight and um, so we're almost on to a final assembly here and I'm really pleased the way this came out so far it's looking really really good not bad for an old monogram kit so once I get the engines and cowlings on it'll look really cool these are some of the simple weathering tools that I use I had mentioned when I showed you the propellers that I use a silver pencil and I just rub it along the leading and trailing edge and then use the tip to kind of outline some of the highlighted relief on the uh, propellers and uh, this works really well but again you, you've got to seal the propellers after using it otherwise this pencil dust will get all over it <clears throat> for um, my technique of just outlining doing some dry brushing I like to use this brush and there's not much to it but it's real stiff and it works real well and I dip it in this silver paint and then uh, I get almost all the paint off because you only want just a little bit on the brush so that's how I do that now for the sponging um, I have different types of sponges and different sizes that I use and <clears throat> what's important is if you just sponge like this all the sponging is going to look the same so you have to rotate it a little bit as you're as you're moving around and again what you want to do is get rid of about 99 percent of the paint so you just have an inkling of it as it touches the surface and uh, so I use different sizes as I go around the surface and it works really really good for the leading edges and, and on the on the leading edges of the cowlings too it gives it a nice random effect you just don't want to overdo it which I tend to do and for my sponging I have another bottle of silver paint and this for sponging is I have it labeled here because it's a uh, I added some uh, thinner to it so that it's it's a lot looser and so that the silver paint won't uh, build up it it'll be uh, nice and thin now for the pencil pastels for the bottom um, I have these buckets I got about 10 different colors um, this is the light gray and this is the black that I use for the exhaust on the bottom and uh, I rub a little bit with the chalk or 
I really like these pencils, but they're getting hard to find. These are pencil pastels. They're not oil pastels, they're pencil pastels. If you use oil pastels, you won't get the same results, so you want pencil pastels. And I use these, these uh, wedge-shaped makeup sponges. They work really, really well. And um, I can usually get two models out of them. But if you have a lot of sharp protrusions, it'll start to rip on this on this sponge, and then <clears throat> you've got to replace it, like on this one. You can see just a little bit here it's starting to gouge. And I use this brush, this angle brush. It's fairly stiff, and uh, I use this for my streaking, um, and it works really, really well. So. Um, I'll show you on the top side too. I'll probably use uh, the dark gray on the top side to replicate <clears throat> um, oil streaks and uh, fuel stains from the fuel caps. So um, once I get that done, I'll show you. Um, you could use a flat brush or these are kind of cool to use, but they're really, really spongy. These makeup sponges also work really well to get into like corners and stuff. So um, these are the tools that I use. Uh, it can get kind of messy. You gotta be real careful. And once you apply this, you can't touch it because it'll leave your fingerprints and you'll never be able to undo that. So, <clears throat> and you, you can't use water on it either because it just stains it. Um, so uh, you just brush it and then when you're done, you give it an overcoat of a clear flat finish and it seals it and you move on. So uh, I just wanted to show you uh, the, the simple tools that I use for weathering. There's not, most people use pretty exotic techniques if you're into model art. I'm not into model art and um, I, cr I try to keep things simple and foolproof. I've made some incremental progress on assembling some parts. I got the elevators glued on. <clears throat> and what I did was, it's a real tight fit, so I positioned them. And then what I did was, I added tiny drops of uh, super glue at the hinge points and then just gave it a coat of clear flat. And when you do that, it makes the glue disappear. And I also glued on the external piping for the exhaust on the, in, on the inside engines. And I glued the engines on. And as I've been telling you, because there was a double plastic backing here, I used Tester's red tube glue, put a few drops on the backing, set the engine in place, and then used a the cowling to ensure that it was properly positioned. So that's what it looks like with the cowling on. The other thing I did was um, I have landing lights right here and on this side too. And um, I've used these resin landing lights that I found at a convention years ago. They're by Meteor Productions and um, they're really cool and very handy. And um, I use them for all of my aircraft constructions in 148 scale. And they come in different colors, black, blue, red, and clear. And um, all I did was just cut one off, painted the back silver, and then uh, use some white glue to attach it. So it uh, came out really good. So now <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'll work from the front to the back to finish the assembly. Um, but so far I'm really really pleased with the way it's coming out. I'm taking my time and um, when I lose patience I stop and take a break and come back to it the next day. On the navigational lights that are molded onto the horizontal stabilizers and on the wing tips I use sharpened toothpicks and I, I'll shake up a cap, a uh, 
quarter ounce bottle of this testers enamel and it's really thick paint after you shake it up real good you unscrew the top and there's just enough on the inside of the cap to where you just dip the tip of the toothpick in here and just enough paint gets on here so that you can make tiny tiny and just barely see the difference there in that color and then here's the green right there and then there's two blue lights here and here on both wings and the horizontal stabilizers so now there's also formation lights that go on the leading edge of the rudder and um, on, the, on the tail here and what I'm going to do is I'll just cut off some blue ones from this Meteor Productions um, resin castings and I'll just use some tiny drops of Elmer's glue and glue them right along here and uh, they'll look real good I use them on my uh, B25 J build and uh, they worked out really really well so <clears throat> what I'm planning on doing here is for the fuselage, I'm going to work from the front to the back. I'll put the Astrodome on, the uh, cockpit glass, the machine guns, and then some of the interior parts, and then go ahead and close it up. The cowlings, work my way to the back, flip it over, and uh, do the landing gear. So we're getting there. I'm really pleased with the way it's coming out. I've got the 50 caliber machine gun sub-assemblies complete and uh, they came out pretty good. The belts are photo etch, colored photo etch from Edward. I found these on eBay years ago and uh, they look a lot better than trying to paint it. So once the uh, canopy glass is on here it's gonna look pretty good. The waste guns for the aft part of the fuselage came out pretty good. These belt covers came from a company in Ukraine. You can find them on eBay. The only problem I had with this was these pieces right here are not very well connected to the glass. So what you have to do just reinforce them from the back side with uh, super glue and white glue otherwise you're going to pop out on it after you install them and then you're going to be in trouble you're not going to be able to grab them so I highly recommend that you reinforce them from the back side here with super glue and then the uh, machine gun all the way around with some white glue that's how I did it and it worked out real well and I put the belt covers at an angle to make it easier to kind of get the, the guns in there. It's going to take a little bit of work to do, but uh, I think I can hold it and just pop it in there. And I'll just, uh, since there's ledges on both sides of the, uh, the glass, um, I'll just put some white glue on the ledges and it'll hold it in place. These pieces don't fit very well in their openings, um, and so there, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. I may try to fill them with some white glue, but um, trying to match the, the paint is going to be difficult, so I think I'll just leave them. But uh, they look pretty good. I've got more parts glued on, and uh, so far progress is pretty good. I've got the interior done here and um, I'm gonna have to do a, a still photography close-up to show you how that looks and I'll go ahead and interspace that with my discussion here. Adding the interior parts to the navigator and bombardier area I started with the Astrodome and then I started working my way forward 
uh, with the seat, the machine guns, and uh, the belts, and uh, then the uh, Norton bomb sight and the control arm for the uh, forward uh, turret, and uh, came out pretty good. So uh, it's crammed, and there's a lot of detail in there, but it looks pretty good. But uh, the front turret's in place, ray domes in place, wheels and landing gear came out pretty good. Ball turret came out pretty good. Um, I really like the effect of the open hatch. And uh, you got to be careful how you handle this. On, uh, and you can just see it here. That's uh, one of the belt covers for the machine guns, and uh, that came out good. So I've got the ailerons glued on and properly positioned, and they came out really good. The engine cowlings have been glued on. They were a real tight fit around the engines, so what I did was I put some white glue on the inside of the lip of each cowling, and slipped it right on there and uh, put it in place. The uh, glass for the navigators area fit pretty well. The radome, the uh, astrodome glass fit pretty well. The, I did a lot of work to try to get a better fit on the uh, cockpit glass and as it turns out I still had to use fuller uh, filler, uh, white glue filler on this side and this side and had it covered a little bit by overemphasizing the worn out paint which I didn't really want to do but it looks okay. You'll see it better when I do the still photography but uh, overall I'm pleased with the progress um, and uh, we'll continue to put parts on it. So. Um, I'll get back with you in just a few minutes when we're ready to uh, I'm ready to show you more glass and more parts put on. We're, we're almost done. I've got almost all the parts installed. I tried um, test fitting the turret and I popped it in place but I, I couldn't get it back out. So um, Luckily the glass will fit right over that. I'll just put a little bit of white glue on the tabs and uh, it'll be done. So I've got the radio operators position installed and that came out really good. I even got the feeder belt on there which you can see the glass for the uh, waist gunner positions didn't fit as tightly as I wanted it to but I've looked at a lot of pictures and there's a little bit of seam uh, void area around it but not nearly as much as on the kit so um, that was a little bit of a disappointment and uh, I've got the antenna and how I did that and these all, all look better um, when I do the still photography. I drilled a hole through that and then drilled a hole here and this is nylon sewing wire which I inked with an indelible marker. Glued that in place first with some super glue. Threaded it through the tiny hole I drilled and uh, pulled it taut and then super glued it and then cut it. So, which is how I do my rigging on my on my ships too, and it, it works really really well. So, <clears throat> once um, once these last three uh, clear parts go on, the nose, um, the uh, the tail, and the turret top, I can go ahead and put the guns on and uh, propellers, and we're done. And then it's on to some still photography, and then uh, I can start publishing this. So um, it came out better than I thought it would, considering the age of this kit. Um, some of the flaws, fit flaws, the worst of which is these covers here. Um, you just can't get around it. But uh, still, overall, it looks pretty good. 
pretty good. And uh, again, once I do the still photography, you'll get a better sense of this. All the remaining parts have been glued in place. The nose piece, top turret, the aft gunner's glass, the props, and the formation lights. And uh, we're done. And it's not looking pretty good. So, there's the formation lights. There's the aft turret. And I've got to put it down and readjust my hand. Mm -hmm. There's the forward turret and the nose piece glass. So we, uh, we are ready to go ahead and set up for some detailed photography, but uh, it's been a long process and uh, I'm real pleased with the way it came out. So uh, hopefully um, all of you who are watching these videos uh, will learn some techniques and try some new things like I did on this one. So with that, have a great day and uh, we'll talk about our next project when I'm ready. This concludes our extensive series on detailing and building the Ravel Monogram 148 scale B17G. I had a lot of fun building this kit and modifying it and super detailing it so that it more accurately represents a real B-17G. The original kit that was issued by Monogram was very well done. Monogram did a really good job of trying to capture both the size, the shape, the outline, and all of the exterior and interior details that they could incorporate in this kit for a nominal price of, I think I paid $8.50 for this kit when I first bought it in the early 1980s. I presented a lot of my techniques that I use in building my aircraft kits during this series of videos and I really hope they were helpful and inspired you to both try these techniques and improve upon them. I've gotten a lot of comments about my use of super glue and the techniques that I use in order to attach parts together. And I got to tell you, I developed this technique over 30 years ago and it has never failed me. So I highly recommend that you try it. The secret is to use new super glue and medium set super glue and swap out the puddles every few minutes because it does start to get tacky and use that 0 0.018 wire in order to apply small beads of super glue along the seam line and let the capillary action of the glue do its work. With that, happy scale modeling. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music and happy scale modeling.